one term in that case. So we have 11r squared plus 12r plus 4 is equal to 0. So that means a is 11, b is 12, c is 4. All of them are positive. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And yes, I'm going to continue saying it because the more you hear it, the more likely it is to stick. You have to have it memorized. So what's under the square root? Uh, 12 squared is 144. Minus 4 times 11 times 4, that's 88. So we've got 56 under the square root. Over 22, let's see here, 56 is divisible by 4. So 4 times 14. And so we've got negative 12 plus or minus 2 square roots of 14 over 22. All of those are divisible by 2, except you do not touch what's under the radical. The only way you can change what's under the radical is if you split it up into factors. Okay. You can only change it if you can split it up into factors. Okay, one more example together. Yes. Where did I get 56? Uh, 12 squared minus 4 times 11 times 4. Did I do that correctly? When you pull it out of the square root, do you have to um, square root it? Yes. Okay. Whoa. Oh, 16 times 11, not 8 times 11. Okay, my bad. Thank you. Um, my bad. Not perfect. Never claimed to be. Okay. 32 is divisible by 16. <clears throat> Take out the i, 16 times 2. So that's 4i square root of 2. And yes, Mellor, the answer to your question is yes, you have to take the square root. That's why you're able to take it out. All of those are divisible by... Two. Okay, much better. Thank you for checking behind. Do you have the number before? Yeah, okay. Yes, that is how you should write it. All right, last example 32, 6n squared minus 8n minus 49 is equal to negative n. Now, most of the time we just have to move a term. We haven't actually had to combine terms, but in this case we are. When we move that negative in, we've already got in on the other side. So that becomes 6n squared minus 7n minus 49 is equal to 0. So x is equal to uh, negative b. Well, b was already negative, so it's going to become positive. <clears throat> plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. <clears throat> it's obviously very important that you are careful with your signs. And it never hurts to just type everything in instead of trying to do it in your head. <clears throat> Put parentheses around negative numbers before you square them. And I can about guarantee you one of you will not. And it will mess up your answer. And I will be screaming that in my head as I am grading your paper. I told them to put parentheses over and over again. You should listen to your teacher. <clears throat> 
Okay, this time we get positive 1,225. Really big number. Let's check and see if it's a perfect square. And it is. Who would have known? I would not have thought that that would be 35 squared, but it is. So x is equal to 7 plus or minus 35 over 12. You need to split that up. 7 plus 35 is 42. 42 over 12. Uh, let's see here. Divisible by 6, both of them. So 7 over 2. And 7 minus 35 is negative 28. Negative 28 over 12. Those are both divisible by 4. So that's negative 7 over 3. And you can check any of these answers. Now, it is a little bit more complicated to check these answers. Now, this, this one's not, okay? And I'm going to do it just <laughs> to make sure that I did my simplifying correctly in my head. Um, technically, you can check those square root answers as well. Let me show you the best way to do that. Um, and that is 7 over 2 works. Let me check negative 7 thirds as well. It is. Okay? So those are good. Okay? Um, if you wanted to check one of these square root answers, um, let's say, uh, let's check this one right here. The last one we did, number 31. <clears throat> what you should do is you need to type in the answer. Okay? Just type it in, in by itself. All right, um, and you need to put parentheses around the numerator. So parentheses, negative 6 plus 2i square root of 2. That parentheses is for the square root. We need another one to close the numerator, divided by 11. Now, have you ever noticed that button beside the 1 that, that says STO with an arrow? What that does is it will store your value in a variable. So press that button and then press X. Okay, so we want to store this as variable X. It's going to store that value in the variable X. And then it, it gives you the decimal answer. Okay, so then that means we can go back and we can type in our equation 4 plus 12 X and see if that is equal to negative 11 times x squared. And obviously we can see that those um, decimals, uh, decimal values match there. So we're good. Okay. Uh, we're good in that case. Um, you could also check the negative as well. Um, but that's the best way to do it. Now that's the reason why if you've ever like, tried to type this into your calculator, um, it gives you a number because somewhere along the line something got stored as your variable x and it's just plugging that in. It's not actually solving for you. It's just plugging in that value that was stored. Okay, so we...